so voting. Voting, um, I mentioned before, it's attached to membership. It's not attached to shareholding, and it's one member, one vote. Um, and that still occurs for joint members. It's one member for the joint members. Um, the model rules will say that generally it's the first person um, who's entered into the register has the right to exercise the vote, but you can change that under your model rules. Um, and the person who has the right to vote can always say, I'm exercising the proxy of them so that the other joint member can vote. Normally, the default is a show of hands for a resolution, yay or nay. Um, and where you, but the, the limitation to that is if you're holding a proxy for three or four other people, you still only get one hand. You don't get five different hands, um, you know, limitations. Um, so at that point, that person who's holding the proxy might say, well, actually, I'm calling for a poll. And in which case, that you will actually go one, two, three, and sort of call off on everyone and say, I've got actually four proxies. I'm exercising it this way, this way, and this way. Um, so they're the two main ones. And yes, you can do ballots, secret ballots, um, if that's how you want to do it. Um, that's not a problem. Um, and the chairperson will have a right to have a casting vote, but only if your rules allow it. So that's something you actively have to build into it. Mm. So the decisions are made in three ways by an ordinary resolution, which is a simple majority, by a special resolution, which is a two-thirds majority at either a general meeting or by a postal ballot, and then there's a special resolution at a special postal ballot, um, which is a three-quarters majority. So they're slightly different from the Corporations Act, which is traditionally just 50% and three-quarters. Um, but you can alter those to make them higher percentages if you wish. Um, I don't know if you want to do that as a matter of practicality in terms of getting the votes, but you can do it perhaps for specific items of business. Like if we're going to wind up the cooperative, we want everyone on board or we want 90% of people on board because it's such a significant decision. Um, and so you could drill down into that level of detail in your rules as to which ones might require a higher threshold. Um, so what decisions require a special resolution? of the auditor, absolutely, amendments to the rules, yep, disposal of an asset, that's a special resolution by a special post or ballot, so that's an even higher one. Um, you've also got the issue of bonus shares, the issue of CCUs, if you're going to change the name of the cooperative, um, if you're going to enter into a management contract, um, or if your primary activity is the acquisition um, or sale of land, um, then you must not sell land the director, sorry, must not sell to the land, to the cooperative, unless you've got a special resolution. Because at that point, the director is obtaining a direct financial benefit from it, and so you want to avoid um, uncommercial, unreasonable, unarmed length transactions. So that's why you go through the special resolution. But that is two thirds majority of these decisions. Um, is there any other way you can pass a resolution other than going through a meeting or a postal ballot? Yes. Perfect. Yes. So um, that only applies if you've got 50 members or less, though. Um, unfortunately, large cooperatives cannot do a circulating resolution. So basically, if you've got 49 members, you can have everyone sign a piece of paper and say, yes, I approve this resolution. You don't have to go through the notice procedures. You don't have to go through a meeting. You don't have to go through a postal ballot. You can just pass the resolution. You would be doing that for decisions that uh, everyone's on board with and you just don't want to have to go to the class and bother and calling the meeting. Um, so you've got postal ballots and special postal ballots. Um, so directors can decide whether or not they want to conduct a postal ballot. Um, there are certain things that require postal ballots. Um, well, they're more so the special postal ballots, actually. Um, Active members who hold 20% or more of the vote um, can also requisition a postal ballot occur at any one time. So that not only do they have the power to call a meeting, they have the power to call a postal vote. Um, so the board is required as part of all the details to um, have a statement of the details of the proposal, the fix the dates, returning officer has to be appointed, returning officer cannot be a director, but they can be the secretary, and he's normally the secretary. Um, and the postal ballot, in accordance with the regulations, must be secure, transparent, and independent. 